Monster Hunter Frontier was an Asia-only MMO based on the Monster Hunter brand. It ran from 2007 until it shut down in 2019, receiving continuous content updates and add-ons over its 12-year lifetime. As it never released in the West and was shut down right as the Monster Hunter series exploded in popularity, it remains a tantalizing, elusive game for much of the English-speaking fandom. I myself had never as much as touched it. So I decided I'm going to play it and drag you along on the journey, chronicling my experiences and any cool things I find and see as a sort of archaeological journey. I hope you join me as we discover Monster Hunter Frontier. We enter Frontier and are immediately greeted by a whole bunch of Japanese text. This game never came out in the West and so has no official English translation. There is a fan patch that translates the essentials, but beyond this, I'm gonna have to use some goofy visual translation setup to understand what the hell's going on. I don't speak no Japanese, that's why all my videos are wrong and stupid. After a character creation process that I forgot to record, we select our server and world and voila, we enter Mezaporta Square, the base slash guild hall of Frontier. Like all MMO intros, this plaza is extremely overwhelming, and not just because I have no clue what my teacher is telling me because the tutorials are also partially untranslated. Immediately apparent is that this game is absolutely bloated with the baggage of a full decade's worth of special events, promotions, extra features, and of course, expired microtransactions. There is just this absolute cacophony of features that is just beyond impossible to grasp initially, with pop-ups everywhere, so I didn't even really want to try initially. I want to ease myself into this and gradually uncover what Frontier was really all about. As I tried wrapping my head around this game, I began noticing one core thing. Frontier is a weird hybrid of old and new school Monster Hunter. It looks, sounds, and plays roughly like the Freedom games, but it is full of quality of life systems and streamlining that put it much closer to newer games mechanically. You can preview your items on your hunter and even mix and match them. You can customize your controls. The smithy tells you exactly where you can get the items you need for any given thing you want to craft, and you can even buy certain items directly at the smithy to then use in crafting, something that no game does so far in the mainline series. A super cool feature is that you can instantly take all items from the reward box with two buttons, something the mainline series would not introduce until World, I think? And for every quest, you seem to also get map materials, like armor spheres and such, which I'd assume is meant to cut down on item gathering and management. Compared to the mainline games at the time, Monster Hunter Dose and Freedom Second, this is massively more streamlined. Even the graphics have this uncanny liminal style. Noticeably old school Monster Hunter, but just a little too crisp, a little too HD. I actually like this a lot. It's like a glimpse into a parallel universe where the original aesthetic of Monster Hunter never changed and was simply iterated on as time went on. It almost feels like a bizarre fan mod for Monster Hunter Freedom Unite or Monster Hunter 2. There is a learning guide called the Hunter Navi, which teaches you the basics and rewards you every time you complete a lesson. It definitely helps. And while there is a lot of stuff here, Monster Hunter is ultimately just Monster Hunter, so without much dilly-dallying, I posted a Velocidrome quest and, uh, why do I have a pet dragon? Why do I have like three NPCs here? Like, wait a mi- huh? So yeah, turns out you start the game with NPC companions, which have to be disabled in the start menu of all places. Weird, but hey, they helped me pulverize that Velocidrome. I turned them off and went on to hunt a bulldrome by myself and, um, yeah. That's certainly a bulldrome. Anyway, look how cool the gathering and carving icons look. Very cute, I like this style. So far, this all feels very much like a regular Monster Hunter game, which is just bloated with weird side stuff. There's a whole gotcha cat that gives you prizes for a near automata thing, like, 
alright. But as far as gameplay is concerned, this is all pretty familiar. So, I gripped my sword and shield and decided to do something a little different. In low rank 1 star quests, you find loads of monsters from the main series, Daimyo, Yankutku, Velocidrome, even Hypnocatries. But hidden among them is a quest for something called a Tycoon Zamuza. Let's roll. I was dropped into a map I had never seen before, Tide Island. I didn't want to explore Tide Island quite yet. I was eager to see a monster I had never met before. I dropped into this convenient hole and was met by a giant ball of shit. This is Tycoon Zamuza, a carapacion that is covered in a hard shell of mud. This shell has to be chipped away at slowly, bit by bit, in what might be the most dynamic use of the franchise's classic part break mechanic I've seen yet. Usually when a monster has a protective armor, like Beroth, you break it off in massive chunks, freeing entire limbs at a time. By comparison, Typhoon Zamasu's armor is much more responsive in breaking bits off exactly where you hit it. From a pure feedback perspective, it is insanely satisfying. I gotta be honest, I really want this guy in a mainline game. The Carapacion class desperately needs new members, and Tycoon here is just so instantly cool to me. Sure, his moveset isn't particularly flashy, but he has enough to keep you on your toes and his armor break mechanic would feel right at home in a mainline game. If he were to return, they could maybe put him into an arena that isn't quite so small and ugly. With the horrible fog effect near the walls, the fight really feels claustrophobic, especially once this crap starts breaking the ground to make the arena considerably smaller over and over again. As this was my first experience with this guy, I played very defensively, mostly just evading and running while getting occasional hits in. Now, this first attempt I made with unupgraded armored weapons because I was an impatient git. So, as you'd expect, I failed. After a little gathering and grinding, I thought I had managed to push my armor and weapon as far as I needed to at the time. Confident, I tried again and died again. This time I actually got to see Tycoon's shell though, and I gotta say, he looks really cool. Tycoon gets progressively faster as you chip away at his heavy armor, and by the time that he is nearly fully exposed, I can barely keep up. I also figured out that if you break off a large chunk of his dirt armor and then let him hit it, it'll explode into a puff of green mist and leave behind a shiny, which you can gather to get a Zamuza fungus, an item that works like a potion, allowing you to have more healing items that you can usually carry. So while I did lose again, I gained more knowledge, and isn't that what this is all about? So I ended up doing even more of the classic monster under gathering and farming, which is fine, I love these games. Frontier even still has the wall cracks that you need to gather from, so you don't actually get to see these little mining nodes, but instead I have to just walk up to walls and see if they have cracks. It's pretty charming. During this process, I also realized that I was wearing Frontier's equivalent of the Defender armor. An early starter game armor that is way too powerful, giving me multiple skills like Gathering Plus and Health Boost. But considering I was getting my ass beat despite wearing this thing, I figured it probably wasn't that overpowered, so I decided to keep it on for now. I'll definitely switch if I get to something that is a little cooler looking. Boy Scouts looking ass. A bit more grinding and oh shit, the maps change depending on the season and time of day, like in DOS. That's really cool. The season's mechanic needs to come back, man. Also, you can still cut raptors in half in this game. Alright. Third time's the charm. I put on my game face, gripped my new, hideous Velocidrome weapon, and went to town on this crab. Tycoon has some cool moves. He can spit poison rocks that stay on the ground for a little bit, and he even has a fake opening, where his claws will get stuck in the ground before he does a wide sweep to punish you for trying to get hits in. It's similar to what Gus Harag does in Monster Under Rise. But the attack that gave me the most trouble was when Tycoon starts galloping towards you with his shield claw raised. He is deceptively quick, and the following swipes are really hard to dodge. Doesn't help that this is an old school Monster Hunter game where hitboxes are still a little silly. But in the end, my grinding paid off and the crab fell. 
the first original Frontier monster was slain. One of roughly 100. <sighs> anyway, after this, I quickly went to the smithy to confirm that, yes, Tycoon's armor is indeed ugly as shit, before realizing that his weapon is actually pretty good, more damage than my current one at the cost of a little less sharpness, but I get thunder damage. And there was only one thing standing between me and this new upgrade. Fishing. Yay. And so, I ended my first foray into Frontier with a cool new crab sword. First impressions? I like this. It has the charm of the old games with some of the convenience of the newer titles, and despite this coalescence, it still feels really fresh and new. Fighting and struggling with a new monster, especially such an early one, was a nice experience that is hard to have anymore once you are a series veteran. I know most of the mainline games pretty well, so being genuinely surprised and taken aback by something new is something I really appreciate. Obviously, the MMO aspects are overwhelming and confusing, and I do assume they'll get much more disruptive as I go on. The language barrier is also not helpful, but we cope. If you've ever played Frontier and have any tips, or saw me something do horribly wrong in this video, let me know in the comments, I'll get better. Also, if you've enjoyed this, show it to your friends, share it around, and tell me if you'd like to see more. If there's enough positive feedback, I might make this a little series if you want. I'm certainly enjoying myself. Either way, thank you for watching, as always. As always, thank you all so much for watching and a special thank you to all of our patrons. Reminder, if you sign up for the patron, you can watch videos a little early, generally two to three days before they come out on the channel. A very, very special thank you to Fiction Ape, Anthony the Hedgehog, Arcturian711, Big Pidge, Claire Miboon, Danilo Villavicencio, Dicey, Geo, Hubble Mirror 123, Jameson Tate, Magenta Magenta, Makot O2, Mench, Mr. Pyramid, Pide Fuego, Person 212, Project Iceman, Russell, Oak Wood Tree, Iron Camel, and Courage. I'll see you next time, and be safe and take care. Bye-bye, friends.